enough of me. All right, welcome everybody. And uh, to those practicing with us later on the YouTube channel, welcome to you as well. Hmm. The uh, title of the little talk and practice tonight is called The Other 99%. And uh, I think we've all likely heard of the 1%. This is a term used to refer to the richest 1% of the people globally, really. I, 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 yeah, uh, who have a massively disproportionate amount of global wealth, property, income, power. And uh, in the year 2011, yes, um, there was this beautiful arising of what was called the Occupy Movement, which uh, was where the, the other, the 99%, the global majority, um, meaning the rest of us, came together to really um, fight these inequities and to name the truth of, of what, what's happening globally. And um, I was thinking, I don't even know how the train of thought that got me there, but it doesn't matter. I was thinking about how something similar often happens within our own minds and bodies. That the 1% of our senses it's very often dominated by the eye sense door in the dharma it's referred to as a sense door where we make contact with mm, the seeing of objects and if if a person is unsighted then the hearing sense door might be their strongest sense etc and so you know the senses compensate when one of them is not functioning as fully but for our, the majority of folks sighted folks the seeing sense door is so so dominant it really um takes the power and the control of most of our awareness in daily life And particularly when we're experiencing physical, mental, emotional, or global pain, as most of us are to different degrees at different times, but we're all, we all do experience these things sometimes. Um, and when we're experiencing pain, we contract. We contract and we protect ourselves from further pain. And when we're contracted, we feel even more solid and permanent. Um, because when we're contracted, we're pushing some things away. Uh, or we're grasping for other things to reinforce our sense of me and mine and to protect me and mine. And this sense of density, of solidity, is actually an illusion. In the Dharma, we would call it a del delusion, delusion. Because, as we know, everything is made up of atoms. And every atom in the body and in absolutely everything else, <laughs> all the other people you know, all the objects in your room that you're seeing, um, the chair you're sitting on, uh, is all made of atoms. And an atom is 99 point nine 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 percent space 
seven minds. And all of this space in you, in me, in all of these seemingly solid objects, through all things and through infinite space has the same qualities, is the same. And yet, most of the time, we feel so solid, <laughs> so permanent, so separate, so continuous sense of me and mine. In a Science Alert article, a, a journalist, Ali Sundermeyer, says it this way. If we lost all the, he calls it dead space, I wouldn't call it that, but if we lost all the dead space inside our atoms, we would each be able to fit into a particle of dust. Wow. Um, and the entire human species would fit into the volume of a sugar cube. <laughs> that, that's one of those things, pretty mind blowing. Because to imagine if all the space was out of this form, what's left would fit into a speck of dust. <laughs> That's amazing. So in our nature, in nature, in reality, we are more open than closed. We are more infinite space than we are matter. And space is not truly empty. Um, in scientific terms, uh, this uh, journalist uh, adds that um, space is not truly empty. It has wave functions and invisible quantum fields. So, um, yeah, this isn't a physics drop-in meditation group. It's a Dharma group. And the Buddha said it this way in uh, the Majjhima Nikaya number 28, if you're interested, regarding the space property or the space element that comprises all things, including this self. <clears throat> he said, friends, just as when independence on or relying on or because of timber vines, grass, and clay, space is enclosed and is gathered under the term house. So the elements that were used at that time to make a house, some lumber, some wood, vines, grass, and clay, the space is enclosed and becomes what we then call a house. And then he says, similarly, in the same way, when space is enclosed in dependence on bones, tendons, muscle, and skin, it is gathered under the term form, or we would say body, or me, <laughs> mine, my body. <clears throat> And this can be a very helpful way to practice meditation, especially when we're in times of strong contraction, strong solidifying around ourselves. When we feel overwhelmed in a state of kind of collapse even, or a contraction. Again, can be physical, mental, emotional, global pain that brings us about. And it's pretty hard to walk around. I've been trying, didn't work for me, 
maybe it will for you, but in daily life to kind of be aware of the spaciousness within this body. Because whenever I'm touching something, it just feels so solid and I feel so solid. Um, it can be really helpful to move around in daily life, aware of the space in the space you're in. When we feel really uh, cluttered or contracted in the space, to there, there's way more space in this room than there is things. And uh, so that can be a helpful way, you know, when if we feel really enclosed in a space to even visualize, but be aware of the space outside or out a window. There's lots of ways to practice connecting to the felt experience of infinite space. And it can really um, counter the feelings of contraction in the heart mind. <clears throat> when we practice in this way, we're going to do a practice in a few minutes. Um, there's kind of there's different different ways in. Um, Today, in particular, we're going to practice mm, connecting to the felt experience of the space within this form, <clears throat> as the Buddha described it. And you can also practice with the space outside or in around us or boundless space. Um, and It can be very liberating practice, liberating from the delusion of feeling like a separate, solid, permanent self. And it can, uh, um, so that it reminds me of Ajahn Chah, she teaches a beautiful meditation called the Take the One Seed. I love that practice. It's also a roomy poem that's a lot like this. So the take the one seat practice, I think I did a recording of it. It's on that YouTube channel. You could probably find it. <clears throat> Within the embodied present moment awareness that isn't clung to and solidified, There can be a spacious awareness in which all the visitors can come and go. And so mind states, emotions, sensations, sounds, all of the sense doors are like guests coming into a room and there's only one seat in the room. And you, uh, meaning you as awake awareness, is taking the one seat and not pushing anything or any arriving guests out. They're all known and welcomed, but you don't give up the one seat. Awareness stays present and, and just allows everything coming and going to be known. So, of course, this is a very helpful practice around, uh, I don't want to feel that, I don't want to think that, I don't want to be like this, and I especially don't want all these other people to be like this, <laughs> which is usually how it goes. Um, so there's so many ways that this practice can be freeing. Yeah. And of course, if if you're a regular here, you will know that uh, my favorite poet poet is Rosemary Witola Tromer. I'll pop her poem into the chat here while I'm thinking of it. Okay, it's there. And um, so that I don't forget, of course, she wrote a poem totally on this topic. 
which I found after the fact. I'm like, I wonder if Rosemary wrote a poem about spacious awareness. Of course she did. Incredible. Because she writes a poem every day. You can sign up for her newsletter and, and receive a poem every day. And they're so good. And she has many beautiful books. I encourage you to support her work. So this one is called Space Exploration. By Rosemary Wittola Trummer. Perhaps one day they will find the way to take all the empty space out of our atoms, condense us to our essence. Then the whole of the human race would fit inside a sugar cube. It would serve us right, expansive buggers that we are, we who stamp our atoms all over the earth, we who now leave our footprints in space. Like our electrons, we exist too many places at once. Or perhaps one day, we'll learn to embrace all that space within us. And instead of plundering, conquering, developing out, we'll go in, travel in, enter grace. So, so on point. So let's, uh, let's practice. So this will be a guided meditation on the space, particularly within this form. <clears throat> Adjust uh, whatever you need to be comfortable, uh, awake, alert, and relaxed. Yeah, depending on what time it is, where you're practicing, this can be a difficult time. If it's, uh, for me, it's almost five to eight in the evening. And uh, so th that can be a very sleepy time to be trying to meditate if you're not used to it. Um, so adjust so you're supporting yourself in a practice of awakening. <clears throat> And take any time you need to really land here. It may be helpful to have any movement or some gentle release or touch. If there's any tension that could help that to soften or ease into some spaciousness. So feel free to take that if that's helpful for you or invite that in. And as you're settling into your posture, it might also be helpful to actually turn and look at the space around you or open your eyes, look at the space in front of you and around you. The eyes tend to land on the objects, you'll notice, as, as looking happens, as we talked about. And so you can just kind of let a soft gaze and be aware of the space around. And then when you feel ready, the eyes could come to rest, either downward or closed. Taking any sighing breaths that feel supportive or helpful. And before we move fully into this uh, guided practice, we're just taking some time to let the body settle down. Allow any habit tensions, maybe in the jaw, the eyes, 
hands, the belly, shoulders. Just check these areas out for yourself in these next few minutes of silence together. And just give some time and space to allow settling to happen. And then we'll very gently, not pushing or pulling awareness, just gently, like a soft magnet, inviting awareness to settle down into what we know of as our feet. And then just feeling sensations of the feet as they rest in stillness. The sensations of that can be felt through the skin, through the soft tissue, the harder tissues, bones, the sensations of texture or pressure, contact. The sensation of skin and then allow Awareness to drop in and through the feet, feeling the inside of the feet and the toes. And all of these forms are made up of atoms that are vastly space. And these sensations in their function as waves might feel like floating, flowing, vibration, pulsing. And then gradually, slowly, let that awareness move up through what we call ankle and lower leg. And explore the awareness, the felt experience, the knowing of the space property. through and within and around.
And then invite this curious, awake awareness to know the experience of what's known as the knee, the knees. Vibrating, tingling, flowing, pulsing. This part of the form can often be one of an area of strong sensation for many folks. If this is an area that often is identified as my knee pain or my bad knee, <laughs> see if you can just gently explore it in a spacious way and see what is that sensation. Is it actually a sensation of that includes movement and space. And then gradually feeling into the area of upper leg. Awareness, knowing space. When you're ready, moving up through the area of the hips, buttocks, pelvis, lower abdomen. This can also be an area of a lot of contraction, strong sensation. Let's see if you can just let awareness sweeping through. Aware of the 99.9% .9 space. And including the mid torso, the organs,
and the upper torso. Faces expanding and contracting, vibrating, pulsing. Even things that feel so solid, like bony areas are full of space and all of the atoms within these forms are mostly space. Notice if you're trying too hard, creating contraction, just relax back, open up. Spacious awareness is just knowing space element within the body. And awareness through the arms. And through the hands, pulsing, vibration, floating. Gently avoiding awareness back up th through the area of the throat and neck. The felt experience of air moving through the space of the breathing canal. And then into the head. Very often the most solid feeling part of our cells. The space of the ear opening, of the nasal opening, the mouth opening. And in and through and around this form. As the Buddha said, this space that's been enclosed by bones and tendons, muscle and skin. And now whole body, this whole form, known in its spacious quality, 
to whatever extent is available to you, to us. And knowing that awake awareness is here also. Awake awareness is knowing this quality of spaciousness in form right now. And in this awake awareness, spacious awareness, everything arises and passes. Nothing to be pushed out or held on to. This spacious awareness has a quality of kindness, a quality of kindness, of care and responsiveness. And we'll continue to gather for these next five minutes in silence.
Perhaps one day they will find the way to take all the empty space out of our atoms, condense us to our essence. Then the whole of the human race would fit inside a sugar cube. It would serve us right, expansive buggers that we are, we who stamp our atoms all over the, the earth, we who now leave our footprints in space. Like our electrons, we exist too many places at once. Or perhaps one day we'll learn how to embrace all that space within us. And instead of plundering, conquering, developing out, we'll go in, travel in, enter grace. Thank you for joining us in this practice. I hope it is of service or at least of curiosity. Hope to practice with you again.